So let us go uh, to our Bibles, to the book of Ephesians uh, 6, 10. Uh, we may stand for the reading of the word. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, if it was me writing this version, I would say, Finally, brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Father, we give you praise for your word this morning. We thank you that you have anointed our ears to listen and to hear your word, and that my mouth is a pen of a ready writer. In the name of Jesus this morning, speak through us to us and through me, in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. You may be seated. And also, for the past two Sundays, we've been having some nice, powerful preachings. Let us acknowledge and and thank uh, the Lord for using Pastor Marcel so much. He's been really... Uh, doing a wonderful job, we really appreciate you, sir. So the title of my message, it's obvious from the screen, Be Strong in the Lord. That's my message. Paul, in this book of Ephesians, he says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. The Ephesian church was a church that was active in idol worship. It was active in worshipping idols. They had the greatest idol which is Princess uh, Diana. Is it Princess Diana? Goddess Diana. The, the, the woman goddess. So the business of Ephesians surrounded itself around the worship of a goddess. Even the businessmen, the craftsmen, the goldsmiths, their business was to make sure they are supplying materials to make sure that the goddess is taken care of. So when Paul writes to them in Ephesians, because now they've received the gospel, he tells them that finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Do not be strong in what you can do. Don't be strong in your intelligence. Don't be strong in your wealth. Don't be strong in your capabilities. Don't be strong when things are going well. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The first half of the book of Ephesians, Paul tells us about what has taken place in us. What God has done in us. When you read from verses uh, chapter 1 to chapter 3, he he reveals the heart of God concerning our lives. So which means when we want to be strong in the Lord, we must be strong in knowing him. Because the, 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 the fundamental understanding of who we are in Christ, it is knowing God. The entire Bible, it is written on the premise of God and being involved in the lives of Israel. It is not more about history of what has taken place and the history of the world, but it is the history of the God of Israel performing 
miracles sustaining his people from genesis to revelation it is all about god all the history hence why there there, there are certain historical moments that we are not sure of because it was not meant for us to know about history but it was for us to know about the history of the god of israel so which means when we read the word of god it is demonstrating the power of god from inception until now so which means when we read we, we we must read with the god's eye view of seeing him doing things in people's lives he says be strong in the lord which means in us we need to know him the premise of us being believers it is knowing god more than anything else which means in our lives we need to have an intimate relationship with him he says in ephesians 1 17 when paul preaches um not preaches but praying for 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 the ephesians he says that i thank that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you may give it to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in him or in the knowledge of him so paul is telling them you 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 your fundamental your primary function and a, as a believer it is to know god before anything else before he does anything else it is knowing him as god so which means as believers we must come to god in, in fact if hebrews uh, let's go to hebrews as well Hebrews uh, 11:6 so we, which means when we come to God we are coming to God not looking for what he can do we are looking for God as is that he exists before anything else before he has created the world the heavens we 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 look at him as God not as he can perform as he can answer our we look at him as God besides anything else He says but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him which means our lives as believers emanate stems from our understanding and knowing him that he exists besides anything else he exists before he created the world that for us to be strong in him we are not strong because he can do things for our lives he is not strong because he can answer our prayers we believe that he exists as he is in 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 in, in, in there the were wise men that came when jesus was about to be born in 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 in, in matthew uh, matthew i think matthew 5 there the, the were there were wise men that came to see jesus as he was born uh, maybe go there uh, matthew 11 matthew 5 1 and 2 They came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, they said to themselves, Matthew 5, is it Matthew 5 or Matthew 2? Matthew 2, 11, sorry. To look. And when they had come into the house where Jesus was, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. and fell down and worship him 
And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gold, frankincense, and myth. So the wise men, when they came to Jesus as a young man, as a young child, before he can do anything else, they worship him. They realized God in his, in his infant stage, in his baby stage, without him doing anything else. So which means as believers, we need to be strong in understanding who God is in our lives. So Paul, he tells the Ephesian church and say, God has given us in, 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 in heavenly places all spiritual blessings. He has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. He has given us all things in Christ Jesus. He continues to tell them that we've been made righteous in Christ. When you read further down the first half of the book of Ephesians, he has made us to be holy in Christ Jesus. He continues to, to tell us that we, 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 we must honor our parents. He continues to say, slaves, on, be, be, be honor your masters. Do, do, do. This is uh, same, 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 same book of, he says that children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it will be well with you. And he continues to say in verses 4, And you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in training and admonishing of the Lord. And he continues in verses 5 and says, Behold, born, born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. So Paul is telling all these things, but he says, finally, brethren, because you can do all these things, because all these things can emanate from your strength, from your understanding. Because even unbelievers can do all these things. They can be obedient to, your, to, to, to their fellow uh, 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 masters, to their bosses. Parents can admonish their kids. But he says, after having done all these things, we need to be strong in the Lord. Because without being strong in the Lord, you will do these things but they will not last. You will go to work and you get frustrated at work, but if you're not strong in the Lord, you're going to be frustrated. So which means we need to understand that God exists not because of what he can do for our lives, but because of who he is in our lives. So he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because whoever comes to him must believe first that he exists. As believers, we believe that God exists. That's our premise. Which means there's nothing that should be able to defeat us because God exists. And God is with us. All the time. He will never leave us nor forsake us. That's the nature of God. And he says, because without faith it is impossible to please him. For he comes, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and the rewarder of those who diligently seek him and number two for us to be strong in the Lord we need to know and understand our identity in Christ our identity in Christ it is so crucial that it drives how we behave Our behavior stems from us knowing our identity in Him. 
We can never be tossed to and fro by circumstances, by situations, if we know who we are in Christ. Because he has made us to sit with him in heavenly places. In Colossians 1.13, he says that God has translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son in love. He has delivered us. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us unto the kingdom of the son of his love. Meaning the kingdom that we are operating in right now it is not the kingdom of darkness. It is the kingdom of light. Our position as we are sitting right now here, we are sitting with Christ in heavenly places, in his kingdom. And in the kingdom of God, there are certain things that are not permitted. There is a way of doing things in the kingdom of God. There is a way of speaking in the kingdom of God. There is a way of seeing things in the kingdom of God. We cannot see things that the world sees things. We cannot speak as the world speaks. We cannot behave as the world behaves. We, not, we cannot be confined to the standards of this world as the unbelievers do. Because we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and our position is in Christ Jesus. So for us to be strong in the Lord, we need to understand that we are no longer dictated by the kingdom of darkness. That Satan has no foothold of our lives. That's our reality in Christ Jesus. That we are not seeking and looking after blessings, but blessings are in us. In the book of First, P Second, First Peter, no, Second Peter one, three, he says that God has given us with His power all things pertaining to life. For his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory and virtue. So which means God has given us all things in his kingdom. His power has given us all things in his kingdom. We are not after things. We are not chasing after things. But we are chasing after him who will give us things. Our focus is on him, not on anything else. Our focus is not on our power. It is not our own intelligence and wisdom, but it is after him. Because there it says, through the knowledge of him, which means the more we know about him, the more the power will be released in our lives that will give us things pertaining to life and godliness. He says, seek ye the, the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. So, when we approach him, we approach him as God and knowing our identity in him. And the more we know him, the more we, we, we fellowship with him, the more we have intimacy with him, the more he channels us, the more his promises materializes in our lives the more his power is get released in our lives so it is us understanding who we are in him there is power has been given already we are not looking for power as believers the power is in you as you are sitting right there The same power that raised Christ from the dead, it is in you. In Romans 8, he says, The power that raised Christ 
from the dead is in you, 11. And it shall revitalize, energize your body. Through his spirit who dwells in you. So which means our relationship with God is very fundamental to be strong in him. Is it number two? So I've got those two things, right? For those two things to happen in our lives, the key focus it is his word. It is believing his word. It is believing the word of God. Because without the word of God, we wouldn't be sitting right here, right now. Because it is the word of God that caused us to be here. It is the word of God that became seed. That is incorruptible and beget us and got us born again and called and caused us to be believers in Him. So, which means the Word of God it is fundamental in us being strong in Him. The Word of God is like fuel that sustains us, the Word of God is like food. That sustains us. A man shall not live by pizza alone. At that time, bread, bread was the pizza of that, of that time. A man shall not eat, live by sushi alone. A man shall not live by beggars alone. But by every word that precedes out of my mouth. The word of God is our food as believers. So which means as much as we are receiving the word of God, we must believe it as well. When Gabriel appeared to Mary in Luke, uh, you can go there, Luke 1, he appeared to Mary and said, Mary, oh, you blessed among the women. He came to her and said, You, you shall conceive and have a child. And that child, you shall call him Jesus, the Savior of the world. And Mary was like, How will these things be, Lord, that I have not A man. I haven't known a man in my life. I'm just engaged to be married to this man called Joseph. How can it be that I will conceive? He was asking sincerely, not through unbelief. And then in verses 37... After the angels, angel has, has, has told him that the power of the, of the highest will, will overshadow you and you shall conceive. Which means the Holy Spirit will impregnate you. And he says, for with God nothing will be impossible. There's a translation that says, for the word of God it is not void of power. And look at Mary's uh, response after the angel said, the word of God is not vo void of power. Then Mary said, behold, thy maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. As believers, we must say, let it be according to your word in our lives. For us to be strong in him, 
we must say behold thy servant of the Lord let it be according to to your word let it be not according to my intelligence not according to my experience I've seen things being done but I'm not gonna look at the experience I'm not gonna look at my past successes but let it be according to your word so Mary believed the word of the angel Gabriel he became she became one with the word it's like us you know if, if I can tell you minister uh, that you, you there's an SMS there that you won a lot of of a million right you know you'll be excited right no you yes you 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 not sleep <laughs> so which means if i say you have won a lotto you get excited even if you haven't seen your bank balance by the virtue that there's an sms that says you have won the lotto you get excited you are driven by the by, by 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 an SMS telling you you have won it even before you 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 go to claim if if you claim it, right? So, similar to us as believers, when we receive the word of God concerning our lives, we must be in a position where we do not consider anything else but trust that what the word of God has said it shall be. When the word of God says you are healed. You know it's hard to believe when the word of God says you are healed by his stripes you are healed. That in Christ Jesus you have been given all things pertaining to life and good. You think it's 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 it's, it's a play because it's in the word of God. It's hard to believe spiritual things the natural things. But what bridges the gap between us believing the supernatural things happening in our lives, it is our faith in Him. And Him alone. So Mary has said, let it be to me according to your word. Mary did not consider the natural facts that he hasn't slept with a man. And how is it going to be? He said, let your word be in my life according to what you have said. So Mary mixed her faith with what the angel said to her. So which means our faith in believing the word of God, it is very crucial. Because you can hear the word of God, but if you don't believe it, it's going to be hard to materialize that word over your life. In Hebrews 4, 2, it says that for those the gospel was preached to them. Indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, which is the Israelites. But the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. So which means when the word of God is preached and released over our lives, it must be, it must be mixed. It must be believed. It must be one with us. Which means nothing else must come between us and the word. And the reason why they didn't believe the children of Israel, it is because they had other things that came into their mind and they considered those things to be real than the word of God. God told them, I've given you Canaan. I've given you a, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But you did not believe what I said. Instead, you murmured. Instead, you complained. Instead, 
you saw things around you happening. You saw that there was no water and you began to complain. You, said that you saw that there was no food and you began to complain. Because that's what they did. They did not believe that God can take them through the wilderness to the land of promise. So the word is fundamental. It is the most crucial aspect of a believer. He says, James, when he tells the church, he says, be, the, be doers of the word in James 1.22. Be doers of the word. And not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Which means when we hear the word of God and we don't believe it, we are like deceiving ourselves. We are not doing any good to ourselves. We are not doing any justice to ourselves. We are like people who just received the word and did not believe it and it shall never happen in our lives. Which means with God, we need to cooperate with Him. We are cooperating with God. We, we are working with Him. In 23, it says, For he, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Continue. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he is. So which means when we read the word of God, when we hear the word of God, when the word is spoken over our lives, it is us looking ourselves into the mirror because the word of God mirrors what God wants for our lives. And the, it's like you when you're waking up in the morning. How many of you didn't look at your mirror this morning when you came here? I, that man is bold. He, he knows himself. Like I didn't look at myself at the mirror. I know that I'm this person. But for sure, all of us here, you, 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 you had to go to your mirror and look at yourself. Because the word of God is like a mirror for us. It is like a mirror for where we are going. So the moment we forget and not be the doers of the it's because we haven't been seeing the word enough on our faces. And verses 25, it says that, but he who looks into the law, in the perfect law of liberty, which is the, the law of faith, and continues in it. So which means the, 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 the most important part here, it is us continuing in looking into the law of liberty. It is continuing to look at, at the mirror. When you are like as a man, you, you look at yourself on the mirror. You continually look on the mirror until you are satisfied that what you see is what you're going to be when you leave this place. That no one will talk you out of your beauty. When I tell you that there's a, a white thing here, uh, Mrs. Mpuru, you won't be uh, offended and feel bad. And say, I thought I looked good. Then what happened to this? Of, uh, what happened to my face now? So which, the, the mirror becomes your foundation of how you go about on your daily basis. If you are not confident that you have done your hair well, you will never leave your mirror until you have done your hair well. Your makeup, well. Your face, well. Which means the mirror, it is the bridge between your day and yourself, which means for you to leave this house, 
You need to know your, and understand yourself first and see then be satisfied that now I'm good to go and face the world. That's the word of God. He says that when we continue in it, we will not be forgetful hearers. Which means for us to do the word, it is not us doing it. It is us continuing and looking into the perfect law of liberty, which is the word of God. And the more we look unto it, the more we meditate on it, the more we, we ponder on it, we shall make our way prosperous. And this one will be blessed in what he does. Which means we won't be doing our own things, but we'll be doing what the word of God wants us to do. We won't be aborting the promises of God, but we will be materializing the, the promises of God over our lives. Because we are constantly looking unto the word of God. Abraham in Romans 4 7, 19 he says and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb Here, Abraham received the word from God. That from today, you shall, never, you, shall, you shall not be Abraham, but you will be Abraham. Or Abraham, you will be Abraham. Which means now you are a father of multitudes. You are not a father of a nation. You are a father of nations. Abraham did not consider his own body. What weakens our faith and our belief in the word of God it is our natural facts. It is what we go through in life. You receive a note from your doctor say you've got TB. The first thing you do it is to go and check on Google whether the, 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 the symptoms or, and whether the stages of death. We are not checking the word to say what is the word saying, but we are checking what death is saying. We are considering those things over your life. You think on those things over your life. Being weak in faith does not mean you don't have faith, you have it. But you tend to think on things that are contrary to your faith. You tend to think on things that are opposite to what God wants you to have. The previous verse 18, go there. He says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he become the father of many nations. Contrary to hope, he was helpless. How can this be? I'm old. He was 75 when the Lord first appeared to him. And for how many years? Until 99 years when the promise actually happened. He had to hope in God. He had to be strong in God. He had to know that what God has promised, it shall be. Because nothing 
is impossible with God. No word of God is void of power. Over any circumstance, over any situation, Abraham understood that when God has spoken a word over my life, I run with it. It shall be as he has spoken it over my life. For 25 years, he had to look at the law of liberty, which is his faith in the word of God. For 25 years, waiting for the promise to take place. Contrary to hope, to the deadness of Sarah's womb, he was, she was medically declared that you can never have kids anymore. But God's word... Because God's word and the faith in God's word is so powerful that no circumstance, no situation shall stand before you. The word of God and belief in the word of God exempts you from any impossibilities. The word of God by itself, when you believe it, you will be like Peter. When, when Jesus said, come. That word come will be like a, a, a substance that you walk onto. The word mixed with faith will become a fortified substance that no man can contend with. The more you continually look into the word of God, into the word of promise over your life, nothing shall be impossible. It shall be as he has said it. And our, our problem and our challenge as believers, we, 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 we tend to believe God when He has done things. We don't believe Him before He has done them. He says in Romans 1 17, let the just live, the just shall live by faith. Which means living by faith, it becomes a lifestyle. It is not a reaction tool for us to respond to situations. Belief in God becomes a lifestyle. The just shall live by faith. We are not reacting to the situations of life. You are not reacting to depression. You are not reacting to, to, to retrenchment. You are not reacting to bad happenings over your life. But you, you, you are constantly rooted in Christ Jesus in faith and believing in his word. Because faith, it is your lifestyle. It is, it, is, it is what you do every single day. You are not caught by surprise that, oh, I need to believe God for this. Oh, I need to... Be no, you believe God constantly because you are permanently looking at the word of his liberty. You are continuing looking as unto the mirror, the word of God. The more you look into the word of God, the more you know who you are in Christ, the, the more you know the capabilities that you have in him. The more you know your abilities in Him, the more you know that God is great in you, that you are more than a conqueror. Which means, the Word of God mixed with faith, it becomes and influences your confession. What you say with your mouth aligns with what you have heard God saying. We are not saying anything contrary to what God has said. Because you are not a reactionary a believer. You are an active believer. You are not caught by surprise that, oh, I'm sick. I need to apply faith. I need to go look for the word. That speaks about this. No, you, you are shielding yourself all the time from all events of life, constantly, all the time. In First Corinthians 4:13, it says, Therefore, the word. Is it first Corinthians 
போய் தேச்சு ஏ தட் ஸ்கிரீன் வென் பிளாங்க் ஏ மீடியா ஓ இட்ஸ் செகண்ட் ஐ திங்க் இட்ஸ் செகண்ட் ஹி சேஸ் தேர்ஃபோர் ஏ தட் ஸ்கிரீன் இஸ் பிளாங்க் கேன் யூ ப்ளீஸ் மேபி டெல் அஸ் சம் ஸ்விட்சிங் ஆன் He says since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written according to what according to what is written I believed and therefore I spoke We also believe and therefore we speak Which means we are not speaking our situations here We are not speaking about our successes as well We are not speaking about how we have been failed we are not speaking about our, our disappointments we are not speaking about what things that have happened in our lives but we are speaking what the word of god says of our lives because the bible says whosoever believes in him shall not be put to shame shall not be disappointed which means we are not anchored on our lives based on things that are happening because when we look at things that are happening and looking and trusting the people that we love will be disappointed but whosoever believes in him shall not be put to shame we can only be put to shame and disappointed in this life when we trust the next person the person that you lean mostly on to you will fall when they move away but we have the same spirit according to what is written we believed or i believed therefore i spoke we believe and therefore we speak we also believe therefore we speak So our basis of speaking it is not from a motivational point of view it is anchored in the word of God our hope it is not a motivational hope it is the faith hope that is anchored in his word In Romans 4:17 He says as it is written I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed God who gives life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did This is the God kind of faith that calls those things that do not exist as though they were which means as believers constantly all the time we are we we are in the realm of speaking things that do not exist as though they were because life emanates from the spiritual realm before you can see it physically all the things that you see happening in this world physically they all started in the spiritual realm all the wickedness that happens physically started in the spiritual realm all the goodness that you see happening on this physical earth it started in the spiritual realm so which means when you want to change your situations and your circumstances and your environment here on earth you need to act like god God called the deadness of Sarah's womb to life. She gave birth when she was old. Where everything was impossible. He called forth a child out of Sarah. Where she was declared nothing will be coming out of your womb nothing good will come out of bethlehem or nazareth
Number four, I'm closing. He says, uh, Corinthians 4.14, for us to be strong in the Lord, we need to be always praying in the Spirit. Prayer in the Spirit, which means you are aligned with the Holy Spirit. You fellowship with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, on a constant basis. He says, who speaks in tongue, in a tongue, edifies himself when you're speaking in tongues you edify yourself when you speak in the spirit you edify yourself when you are facing situations you, you don't speak contrary you just step into tongues and edify yourself when you feel down charge yourself in your most holy faith in Jude 6, uh, in Jude 20. He says that, uh, go there, in, in, in Jude 20. He says, but you, beloved, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Which means prayer builds you up. After having believed, after having confessed, praying, and, in, and, and staying in, 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 in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, builds you up. And the last one. Be on God. For you to be strong in the Lord and, and in the power of His might, be on guard. First Peter 5 7, as I'm closing, he says, Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. We are casting all cares on him, which means we are stripping ourselves of the things that will make us to look into ourselves to him continue verses 8 and then he says be sober be vigilant because the adversary the devil walks about roaring like a lion roaring like a lion oh this one says uh, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour So, if Satan is seeking, he seeks to find. So, which means as believers, there is a level of our fellowship and our walk with God that Satan cannot seek to find us. He will seek and seek, but he will not find us to, de to devour us, to destroy us. He says, be sober, be vigilant, which means all the time we must be vigilant as believers because there are people who will be there in your life to take you away from your faith from what you believe from your church from your men of god there will be people that will sway you away from your god there will be circumstances that will sway you away and make you drift away from your belief in the word of god And James 4, 7 says the same thing. He says, therefore, submit to God. So all these things, we're doing it unto God. We're submitting to God and resist. So after us having submitted ourselves to God, he says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Which means we are active in our daily lives. There's never a time where we lay our guards down as believers and the last one verse first, first Peter 1 5 then I'm closing he says who are kept by the power 
of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So we are kept. We are not keeping ourselves. We are kept by the power of God through faith. It is our faith in Him that sustains us. It is the daily living of our faith that just shall live by faith and not by sight. Faith, it is our lifestyle. Faith, it is like water in our lives. Faith, it is like bread in our life. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. I thank you, Lord, this morning that your word will be activated in our lives. That our faith in your word, O oh Father, will be intact. We thank you, Lord, O oh Father, that you will be strong in you and in the power of your might. That we won't be strong in anything else but in your power and in your word. That your word will be in our lives according to what you have sent it to be. In Jesus' mighty name. That no word that you have spoken of our lives shall come back to you void without performing and doing that which you have said it to perform over our lives. We thank you, Lord, our Father, in Jesus' mighty name, that we are anchored in you. That when, oh God, oh Father, we are discouraged, we are dis in despair, we are distressed, we, we, we are hard-pressed. But God, we, 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 we are founded strong in you, in Jesus' mighty name. That you are not strong because of what you have done, but we are strong because of who you are. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration this morning. And let the church shout a big amen.